part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Welcome back, everybody, to Podcast 616, the official podcast of Earth 616. I'm your host, Damon Royster, and today... Oh, happy 2023. We're doing it. We are talking about the first film in Phase 5 of the MCU, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Colum, Quantumania, a.k.a. Honey, I Shrunk the Franchise. Uh, today, we, uh, to begin, um, it's okay, you can laugh. If you think it's funny, please laugh. Um, <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only work I put into this, the AKAs. Everybody, those dulcet tones you're hearing, we are starting Phase 5, so... I'll pretend that this was planned, uh, but they started phase four with us uh, way back when the original podcast guests, they are together. I would say the hottest couple in Chicago. They're they're an actor. They're a model. They I don't know the rest. Um, they do everything, literally everything. My dear friends, I love them both equally. Nobody will be forgotten. So please welcome to your ears, Isaac Snyder and Evan Mills. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> again. Yes, thank you oh. so much. Oh my god, you're so welcome. Uh, thank you for doing the work and actually going to a theater to watch this movie. Of course, it okay. was so fun. Honestly, <clears throat> yeah, we would have been there regardless of if we had to have filmed the podcast. You know, yeah, we are we are filming. Um, yes, let's begin. <laughs> let's begin with that. Uh, way back when, on December 26th, we infamously celebrated Christmas the day after. You two are huge Ant-Man fans, and I would love to know why. As listeners, well, we've been covering all the Ant-Man movies. I've, I've watched just as much as you. What brings you back? I'd say that I am the Ant-Man fan, ah. um, and Isaac tolerates it. I, I would say that I do t- tolerate it. I, I enjoy Ant-Man. It's mm-hmm. not my immediate franchise for Marvel that I uh-huh. that I go to. But, but for me, it's Guardians and Ant-Man. And the fact that we got we're getting both those movies back to back. The first time I saw both those trailers, I think I cried. But I Ant-Man, know. to answer your question, it's just so fun. It's mm-hmm. so fun. And he is a regular human, but unlike Black Widow and the Arrow guy, Okay. He is. He has so much more power. Is that you know? Yeah, yeah it's I, not like his suit is like you know special by any means. It's, no, it's all him. It's all him. <laughs> well, okay. Listen, Ant yeah. Man. Rewatching Ant Man and the Wasp, it literally I laugh so hard, and I am so fat. I just love when the building shrinks and the cars shrink, and like. Just fun things like that. Like, you don't get that in other franchises. In Iron Man, he's just like, I'm rich. And I'm like, cool, dude. That's fun. Captain America, mm-hmm. he's like, oh, look, I I fell asleep in ice. And now I'm really strong. Let's go off. Okay. This is blasphemy. Ant-Man, <laughs> we he's like, stop the podcast. Ant-Man, Ant-Man, he opens up a little container and there's like 50 cars in there. And I'm like, look at this. He's saving the planet. He's downsizing. I- Starring Matt Damon. <laughs> he is I'm sorry. I love Matt Damon. Damon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair, fair, fair. A little fact check. I do believe it was Hope who had the cars in the, yes. in the, in the case. Thank you, uh, Damon. Keep him in check. You know? <laughs> no problem. My job is to remind everyone that Hope Van Dyne is in these movies because that's my main complaint. <laughs> it's, it's like, do you remember yeah. the Wasp? <laughs> Yeah, no, she exists. Yeah, it's funny that they that they actually called this movie Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. The second one for sure, definitely Ant Man and the Wasp. But this one, it was like Ant Man, the Wasp, the other Ant Man, the other Wasp, and then yeah. the kid. <laughs> well, what was funny about? Well, I guess we're just jumping in about our. Oh, well, should we? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Give me your initial overall thoughts. Well, yeah. I just think it's funny that. For a movie that was allowing Michelle Pfeiffer and Michael Douglas to star in it, mm-hmm. in allowing. Ant-Man and the Wasp, they show their suits, and they all had suits. But for some reason in this movie, Michelle Pfeiffer and Michael Douglas were absolute regular humans the whole movie. But I guess it's because we needed to meet Grace. Is that her name, right? The daughter? 
Cassie. 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 Why did I say Grace? I don't know why he said Grace. <laughs> I thought Gracie, but it's Cassie. Gracie? <laughs> yeah, who's Grace? You said Grace. Is Gracie a name? I don't know anyone named Grace. <laughs> And <laughs> I don't know where that even, came. even I know even less Gracie. I said I'm a huge fan of Ant Man, so Gracie, she's <laughs> really, really wonderful. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Evan, you loved William H. Gracie. Um, <laughs> well, yes. Okay. To your point about Mich- Michelle Fife's, who I love, um, and I think it's a great place to start because that's the first scene we see in this movie. I don't know. I kind of just figured they like hung up their suits because like they were Ant Man and the Wasp in the '80s, and then. True terrible misfortune she disappeared and also in the first a man movie michael douglas has some like thing of like it took a toll on me there going so there small is, yeah, yeah. that's good uh, <laughs> oh i've been watching him for a month i know this man yeah it's, it's i know this ant man yeah it is kind of nasally scott you destroyed my suit <gasps> that's, that's good. good okay Wow. wow. It's okay. like he's a performer or something. <laughs> kind of crazy to upstage me on my own podcast, but uh, here we it's are. Okay. I, I can keep talking about Gracie if you want. No, 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 no. Own your truth. <laughs> okay. So Isaac Snyder, famously, you grew up on a farm. And what would you have done if a being from another world just crash landed on your amoebas farm? Right, exactly. So famously, I did grow up on a farm in, mm-hmm. in Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> yep. Farm, um, the farmland, as we call it. The farmland, as we call it. <laughs> Home of the wire and and cows and pigs. Um, mm-hmm. For sure. I mean, if Jonathan Major showed up on my farmland, <laughs> be game over um, okay. for me. <laughs> are we? Okay, also, sorry to interrupt the question I just asked, but are we also... Please. Are we all just team John Majors at this point? Because I'm I'm very excited. Oh yeah. Um, I, I wish you could okay. see me like shaking my head violently. Oh yeah, right I realize now, I had to I have to answer out loud. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Love, love him. He was um exceptional in Loki. And then having him come back for this one was just absolutely wonderful. He's so attractive and as an actor altogether like he's a very good actor like he yeah. really like sells himself to this to the roles and um does that, it really wonderfully that's what they teach you at the yale school of drama that's right he did go to yale so oh shit he's yale you know that he's yale i did not know that i'm yeah. excited to see yale uh what yale can do for this because i don't know does josh bro someone fact just josh brolin where'd he go i feel like it wasn't yale that I don't have the answer for you. Are you trying to make okay. a connection though with like the villains of the MCU being Yale alumni? <laughs> well, uh, no, not not that. But I'm trying to make a connection that uh, I think our villains will be better because they are Yale trained um, versus mm. some purple testicles that were not uh, Yale yes, trained. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, like Thor, Love and Thunder. You have Christian Bale, who's the Methodist of method actors. Mm-hmm. You know? He is pretty intense, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, I just think there's something about like casting good actors in villain roles that will just lead to better villainry. Uh, Kate Blanchett, Kate Blanchett, but also and also Alfred Molina, Spider Man too. Yeah, absolutely. Even going back to like Sir Ian McKellen, Magneto, great, mm-hmm. great character um, for him as an actor. They pull out all the Oscars for the villains, don't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and Rachel McAdams, Mean Girls. Name an Oscar. What Oscar? She's nominated she... for an Oscar for Spotlight. <gasps> that is true. Gotcha. Wow. Got your ass. She was. <laughs> I don't like getting got on my podcast this much. Don't um... test my Rachel McAdams facts because. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was also in Doctor Strange. <laughs> she was in Doctor Strange. <laughs> yes. To bring it back to Marvel. <laughs> Thank you for that. But, okay. The king of it all. I'm excited to see Kang. I like this this intro moment. It's like it's mysterious. It's a flashback, you know, getting to see like Michelle Pfeiffer was down there in the quantum realm for 30 years. But I feel like we only talked about her last year because she kind of looks the same. But, you know, wonderful. She has a whole little setup and life down there in this place that we were told for two movies. You couldn't live down there. But like, you know, she's fine. And she Um, did it for a long time. And also there's just there's so many other people down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it is society. It, yeah, there's a whole society, and it's interesting to think about the fact that, like, 
to jump into the quantum realm as a whole. Like do. Ant-Man, uh, Paul Rudd, he was in the quantum realm for five years. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I kind of like forget about that little detail. Like, does time not work? Yeah, wasn't, the same? wasn't he just floating, though, for five years? Floating for five years, but he did say in Endgame that for him it was like six hours. Um, yeah, it felt like whoa. it did not feel like five years. So yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer probably was only down there for like three days. <laughs> well, I mean, she wasn't because you yeah. know she had a in daughter her grow mind. up. In and her like, mind. You know. yeah. In her mind. I think for her, maybe it was five years that <laughs> she was in the quantum realm. But uh, yeah, Scott, he said it was only six years. Can we pivot to Scott? Is this okay to pivot to Scott Lang? The yeah. Ant-Man? Spider-Man. Sp- <laughs> that made Thank me laugh you, Spider. i know it was in the trailer but like in the actual movie it made me laugh it was goofy but it was, it was like weird. a perfect it was like a perfect uh selling joke for the trailer you yeah. know very funny yeah. but i'm sorry what were you gonna ask well i was gonna ask about scott lang and how we love him but actually with the trailer i wanted to call out something did y'all think get the impression from the trailer because they literally said it that the theme or like the thread of this movie would be like scott trying to turn back time to make Cassie younger again. There was a really big emphasis on the whole idea that he lost all this time due Mm -hmm. to, you know, the events of Endgame and um, stuff like that. But it kind of, it felt like it was, it was just like a side thing. Yeah. But it wasn't like the main plot of the movie per se. Yeah. And we already dealt with that though in Spider Man. So it's like with Doctor That's Strange true. and Spider Man, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. we don't need to the right trailer the, the trailer was the trailer was very like because it was like that moment where he's like, So what's it gonna be, Ant Man? Thinking you're like, Oh, is he gonna do what Spider Man did and get Cassie back? To becoming a to child. To becoming a child. Yeah. But I, mm-hmm. yeah. Has anyone ever asked what Cassie's wanted? That's all I have to say about that situation. You know, Isaac, what does Cassie I, want? I'm happy to tell you, no one's talked about Cassie ever. This is probably the most <laughs> we're going to talk about Cassie. Um, well, and also Cassie is probably the only character that's ever been played by three different actresses. So. Iconic. Pretty, know? pretty iconic. Pretty truly. iconic. We'll get to her in a second. But uh, Scott Lang wrote a book. I was sad to see like the Easter egg from the Miss Marvel show that Ant-Man has a podcast did not come up in the movie. Missed yes. opportunity. But it um, was a missed opportunity because I, I thought the same exact thing where I was like, wait, doesn't he have a podcast as well? Like, I know mm-hmm. he sells books. That's cool. But like, what about who his doesn't? podcast? And who are the guests on his podcast? As a podcast host, I felt a moment stolen. He's got a book. It's very fun. Paul Rudd does a voiceover and everybody loves Ant-Man now. He's employee of the year or of the century. Of the century. Yeah. At mm-hmm. Baskin Robbins. Huge day for Baskin Robbins. Honestly, until this movie, I really thought Baskin Robbins had gone out of business. Mm-hmm. <gasps> I threw I, I truly <laughs> thought it was it did not exist anymore. That's I have wild. not seen one in years. Are you kidding? If there's a Dunkin' Donuts, there's a Baskin Robbins. No. That's- I, I would agree. It used to be like two thousand three. It that no, was no, the no, case. no 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 no. Let's like let's go two blocks down the street to the Dunkin' Donuts, and there's a basket Robins right on in there. Okay, and we'll be right back. Yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> Pause the podcast. Hold on. <laughs> we have to pa- we have to fact check if they live by a basket Robins. Um, well, as someone who had a sad, lonely boy uh, self date this past Wednesday, I'm fine. Um, I wandered around <laughs> Century City Mall, and there was indeed a basket Robins. There you go. Wow. In the okay. century, cen- century, city. century. Century City. Century mm-hmm. City. Oh, where we went together that one time. Not you and me. Where did we go when I was hungover? Oh, the Americana. That's where. Oh, you were really hungover that day. My God. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I told you about that. Anyways. You were fine and then we ate and then you weren't fine. <laughs> yes. That, sound, that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Everyone. But Scott Lang. Listeners. Scott Lang. <laughs> ant-man so he's popular i don't know but you know not everything's great for superheroes because his daughter is wouldn't you know it a political activist of course she is that Um, makes so much sense for her when she shrunk the cop car though i was like you go gracie for a hot second i thought 
it was like a joke that the, the cop just had like a toy car collection. <laughs> 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 I'm like, like, oh no, that's so cute. She stole his collectibles. And I was like, oh, what, right. She has, what's, okay, how does she have access to shrinking technology? How did she get a suit? I have so many Gracie questions. This I'm is go with exactly this what I was talking to Isaac about last night. Mm-hmm. The theory of Marvel in general or superhero movies in general, where they are allowed to just tell us things like, well, while you were away for five years i had plenty of time to work on experiments and and gadgets and then in superhero movies she can just say i made a machine that connects us to the quantum realm and we as an audience just go yep because how else are we going to explain this (laughs) so to me when she was like i also have a suit and i said of course you do like why wouldn't you i never doubted it because i was just like to me Logic makes no sense in any Marvel film. <laughs> no. So I was like, yeah, sure. She, sure. And yeah, everybody check and tap your chest real quick that you also don't just have an Ant-Man suit at the ready. I don't. Ugh, it's okay, so I tried. unfortunate. <laughs> I tried to you check thumb your thumbs. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, and also it's like, how did she do it in five years when literally the three experts on shrinking technology and her dad were all either snapped away or in the quantum realm? Like who helped her? That's what I'm saying. That's actually a really great point, Damon, because, yeah, you're right. All of them were snapped out of existence. I mean, I guess it also just goes into showing, like, where quantum mania falls on the actual, like, timeline of the MCU. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, how how many years after Endgame is it? Yeah. You know, is it is it one of those movies that, like, although it didn't come out during phase four, it technically, like, takes place during the events of phase four? Like, yeah. You know, we we won't know until it comes out on Disney Plus, Disney Plus and we get that and they timeline put in the time. order. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Um, Isaac also said last night, he said, you want to talk about Nepo babies? Look at Cassie. It's so true. <laughs> she was. She was a Nepo oh. baby. She had this one line where she was sitting in the back of his freaking Tesla, like, mm-hmm. while they were driving. And she was like, oh, like, children of billionaires and stuff like that and i was like queen you're not that far off like you are the child of an avenger you get right anything you want you literally shrunk a cop car and <laughs> and they let you go exactly um, it didn't it didn't make sense she should recognize her privilege yes. <laughs> also we should recognize that again hope i'm on hope watch hope is in this movie she's started some kind of non-profit <laughs> thing she wears business suits she wears great dresses to galas i don't know what they were doing but she and scott have matching hair she she wears really great wigs every time they hugged i was like who's who who's <laughs> who's who they look like actual <laughs> siblings and i was like yes y'all come on they did evan, have very similar hairstyles i'm so glad, evan i'm so glad you were not in the theater i was in because i made the same joke so i'm glad we were thousands of miles <laughs> away yeah I just, every time they were standing next to each other, I was like, look at these identical twins. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's also the best their relationship has ever been. Truly. So. Did they kiss in the movie? I don't in think this they one? kissed. They said, I love you at the end, remember? And then, and they, then they hugged. hugged. <laughs> and then that was it. Also, I mean, you know what? You know what absolutely threw me? What? And again, I accept everything that Marvel gives us. But you know how in like some Marvel films, like, guardians they always have to like be wearing something to protect them from breathing in this one they were all so casual about just being like like letting their helmets off and i'm like Mm -hmm. you don't know if you can breathe down here yeah you are all so confident that you could just land in this amoeba land and be like oh let me just take my helmet off and let and hope my head doesn't explode that's true i couldn't stop thinking about that that's really interesting that you would have that thought But, like, to be completely honest with you, you know, Janet was already in the quantum realm for, you know, 30 years. And then Scott was in the quantum realm for, like, five years. So they probably know, like, yeah, there's oxygen down here. No problem. I guess. I guess. You know? I guess. No problems. They had to drink the, you know, not to get ahead of ourselves, but, you know. Oh, the whole man? The man of holes? The whole man. Man with no holes. Let's get to him in a second. So there's this whole thing, again, I'm on Hope Watch, where Hope and Hank, disgusting that that Hank and Hope, I hate that name convention, but uh, Janet has not disclosed to them 
what went on in the, the quantum realm, which, you know, fair, you know, she came back and then they got snapped away. But like now they're like, OK, what can you tell us now? I mean, I don't know. I love a woman with secrets. But um, did you find this <laughs> frustrating that they didn't know? I mean, I kind of loved it. I, mm-hmm. I love that she came up from the quantum realm. She's back in like our reality. And she's like, yeah, there's something I never told you. I'm like, that is so <laughs> like bitchy. Like just it's also <laughs> screenwriting. It's screenwriting 101. It's like, mm-hmm. if she were to have told them this, we would not have gotten that 15 minute monologue in the ship where they were floating literally through nothing, which happens in in all movies when there's like that lull of like, oh, now we're just casually in space. So let me tell you a story about why we're here. It literally you know what I mean? in Love and Thunder when Natalie Portman talked about exactly. her character. And they're just like floating through the rainbow or whatever. And she's mm-hmm. like, here, let me tell you. It's a, okay. It's a, we've it's all, a, we've all read Save the Cat. We get it. Like- but it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing where... I liked it because Michelle Pfeiffer was clearly like, I was trying to protect you. And I said, yeah, yeah. Okay. We get it. What was so funny is like the lead up to Kang of them being like Mm -hmm. the conqueror, Mm -hmm. him, he, he's coming. And I was like, just say it, say it. Cause we wanted to hear it. So Mm -hmm. when she finally did the monologue, it was like, okay, yes, Michelle, let it out. And you know what? No bad notes about Michelle Pfeiffer. I think she, is one of the saving graces of this film. I think it should be called Ant-Man and Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, it should be called Ant-Man and Miss Baltimore Crabs. Miss <laughs> Stop. <laughs> How dare you. How dare you. Dare you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you. You didn't even go for Catwoman. You went for Baltimore Crabs. Yes. Um, she said, listen, Hope, it's CinemaScope. I, <laughs> I can't. Oh, wow. Gosh. Unreal. Yeah. Of course it would be you. We have not, that has not come up at all in these podcasts. And of course it would be you to bring that <laughs> to this space. Okay. Let's go to the quantum realm. Cassie's like, Oh my God, I got this cute thing to show you guys. And they're like, I think it's dangerous. And she's like, no, 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 no. I got it. And then boop, 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 shroop, they get shrunk. I think and Cassie also, sucks. I'm sorry. Cassie. Yeah. Cassie just is very privileged. Cassie's like, look, <laughs> no consequences for me. I'm Gen Z. She's like, my dad's an Avenger and my stepdad's a cop. What the fuck are you going to do to me? Exactly. Yeah, she did kind of she did kind of like jump right on into that. I mean, to like justify it, the whole thing that she said about how she was like, oh, you know, there was five years where you were gone and I was going to find you like regardless, mm-hmm. I was going to find you. Um, I thought that was really yeah. sweet because, you know, to like bring it back to their relationship, which like at the core of the Ant-Man movies, I really do think it is about the relationship between Scott and Cassie. Yeah. Um, and I give it. Yeah. And that was just like a really lovely moment where she was like, where she said to him, like, I was going to find you regardless of if you like popped back up again. Like, mm-hmm. so I thought that was really sweet. Also, I love to defend Cassie. I for- love that moment in the car, too, when she's like. He's like, why don't you just try and live a normal life? And she's like, Dad, a man in a bee suit came into my room when I was six. I don't have a normal life. And right. I was like, that's that's funny. That is, uh, she's been traumatized since her earliest memories. Truly. <laughs> no. And I will say, shout out to a dear friend of the pod, Ethan August, who was on the Ant-Man podcast. We had a little uh, lunch thing yesterday, and he was talking about how this movie, I wish the movie had put more of a stamp in it, but there is this conversation of like overcoming trauma because like the quantum realm, we're going to go deep, much like the quantum realm. The quantum realm was this like symbol of like fear for people who are known to shrink, you know, habitual shrinkers, like don't go too small or you go to the quantum realm. Mm -hmm. And then they did. And not only did they save it, I believe at the end, like Mm -hmm. Ant-Man and the Wasp are like the saviors of the quantum realm. And it's now this place where they are seen as heroes, whereas they, it was a place they like feared in the beginning. Yeah. And it's so funny. I was telling this to Isaac last night. Nobody on earth knows what he just went through. Mm -hmm. So like he literally just saved an entire species and no one on earth will understand that. He'll be like, I just saved, I just saved something. And then they'll be like, cool, cool. (laughs) Like he is literally like Horton. Here's a who. Mm. Okay. Yeah, he is. He is. He's he saved a little, little world (laughs) on a little speck of flower. And Carol Burnett 
as the kangaroo, I'm Not going too Carol deep. Burnett. I'm going too deep in the, into. What we're talking about Horton Hears a Who, Hairspray. I mean, <laughs> everything but the movie. <laughs> also, I will, I, I will say Michelle Pfeiffer screenwriting absolute miss is when they could have easily put in a tiny little line of Michelle Pfeiffer saying, do you really want to know what lies beneath? You're fired. Uh, <laughs> you're absolutely fired. <laughs> that would have been so iconic if she said that. And only the true Michelle Pfeiffer fans would understand what that meant. What lies beneath is one of her greatest films ever. And what lies beneath in the quantum realm. He just pointed to my crotch. I want everyone to know that. <laughs> I, like, I did. I, I'm a you witness. saw that. <laughs> I'm a witness. I did see that. If you need me to testify, I will. So... <laughs> Let's go to Isaac Snyder, who's not talking about Michelle Pfeiffer movies. Um, <laughs> talk about the quantum realm. How did you like it? Did you love it? Uh, do you want some more of it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I I really enjoyed the quantum realm. I thought it was really cool. I thought that the the overall like adventure of the movie was really cool because it mm-hmm. gave off that vibe of like those old Ant Man like Tales to Astonish sort of comics that were like very kind of zany and weird and like. Ant-Man and the Wasp would get into all this crazy stuff and like mm-hmm. you know it, it felt like a, a an original like Marvel um comic which was really cool in my opinion and then you know then them going up with like Kang being in the quantum realm like I thought that was super justified like where are you gonna put the most dangerous person in the entire existence um mm-hmm. let's let's throw him in this realm that is teeny tiny maybe he'll stay there (laughs) i loved that 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 reveal that he was exiled and like he just took over the place that he was exiled to nobody cares about the quantum realm no but it was it it did show like the the power of him as a character it's like you know he is a conqueror so like anywhere that he goes he's going to become number one and and i honestly i think that's hot i think that's that's a, I think that's incredibly attractive in a person and not to give away where I'm going with things, but um, I'll just say this. He, I've met Kang and no notes. I don't see the problem. Okay. So you would say he conquered you? Uh, not yet, but he could. Um, okay, okay. I would put well, up minimal resistance. To well, and conquered. also speaking of, speaking of how horny you two both are about <laughs> Kang, I could not get over that line in the movie when she literally said, <gasps> when he said, I'm coming. And she said, who's coming? And he said, me, a lot of me. And I said, this is disgusting. It was, <laughs> it was super queer. <laughs> oh, so yeah. funny for this him, disgusting. for Cassie to go, who's coming? And he goes, me. me. And literally, I kid you not, so many people in the theater were giggling. Yeah, it was like mm-hmm. tiny giggles too, because you know it was like a family theater. But like you could tell that there were some people in the theater that were like, "Did he just talk about come?" Like, <laughs> and you went to Skokie for that Skokie, Illinois. Uh, yeah, we went to Skokie. Yeah. Huge for Skokie. No joke. Uh, huge. <laughs> he he went to the bathroom uh, before the movie started, and a family of I'm not even joking, like 25 people came into the theater and filled one entire row. Mm-hmm. And um, oh my I was God. like, I was like, oh, so this is. This is an event. Absolutely. Yeah. It's Marvel. It's Marvel. It's a fa- fabulous event. And um, speaking of events, the event that I always look forward to the most is the break. Um, so we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when we come back, there's so much we haven't talked about. We've got to talk about Bill Murray. We've got to talk about MODOK and who MODOK is. I am beside myself with that fact. Okay. Um, I can't wait to talk about him. Me too. Oh, yeah. And then also, don't forget, Evangeline Lilly is still in this movie. Um, so we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Uh, keep it right here. Hey, everyone. This is Don Mike Mendoza, the host of Producing While Asian. Join us in season two for more conversations with actors, artists, producers, and more from Broadway, Hollywood, and beyond every other Wednesday on the Press Play Podcast Network. Welcome, everyone, to Podcast 616, the official podcast of Earth 616. I am your host, Damon Royster, and I am inviting you to listen and subscribe to this Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast. 
On Podcast 616, we gather some of today's greatest comedians, writers, and actors to dive deep into all things Marvel, like comic book history and lore, all the interconnected superhero storylines, and of course, who's hot and who's not in the MCU. Honestly, why aren't you listening right now? You have the power to listen to Podcast 616. And as we always say, with great power comes even greater responsibility. Listen and subscribe to Podcast 616 wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. And we're back. Evan Mills, uh, what is your relationship to Bill Murray? Um, he's my stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, my mom my mom's my mom loves white men, so you do too. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? We all do. Like um, mother, so... like child. Um my relationship <laughs> with Bill Murray, um, well, he's in one of my favorite movies of all time, which is Groundhog Day. I don't know. I have a love, love, hate relationship with Bill Murray. I like, I think he's funny. He's not like my favorite comedian. I, I'll watch him in things. Yeah. I thought he was great in this. And I was telling Isaac this too. I was like, I love that Marvel does like just these, like gets these really famous people to do like really tiny roles in Marvel films, but they're always really like tiny. So uh-huh. super tiny, <laughs> but they're always just like so fun. And so like Bill Murray, I really did not expect him to literally perish yeah. as soon as we had, we met him, but kind of like Jeff Goldblum and Thor. I was gonna say, I thought this was going to be like the Goldblum pot or Russell Crowe and love and thunder. Like I thought we were going to get like, yes, a lot more, a lot more Murray, but his placement in this, I think this is, falls into like Marvel's quest for like that four quadrant success because i think that this this one's for the dads i think like this dad movie. bill murray being in the movie. oh yes um yeah like yeah. this is this is the part for the dad and like <clears throat> not really sure what's for your mom but um <laughs> hang hang oh. jonathan majors <laughs> and yeah and with that can we transition into jonathan major i feel like we've barely talked about him um <laughs> you, you said <laughs> tell me about bill murray anyways jonathan majors <laughs> i want i i feel like i gave as much screen time to bill murray in this podcast as he was given in the movie that's actually really fair that is valid so isaac snyder kang the conqueror his plan was just to escape correct do you want to set up his struggles or do you want me to do it <laughs> here why don't you do it it's your podcast baby hell yes okay so michelle pfeiffer is through some deus ex machina uh She's like going to help him leave the quantum realm, but then she touches a thing and can see into his mind. She's like, wow, you're bad news. Right. So she blows up his machine with one of those enlarging discs. And then it's like this weird red wavy thing that he can't get into because he needs someone really small to get in there. And so he's stuck. So instead he took over the quantum realm. So his plan is to get Ant-Man, threaten his daughter, have Ant-Man shrink down to size repair his ship so he can go to the service world and take over that place i i don't know i kind of love it i kind of love that their whole thing is like we have to stop him from leaving here to basically take over another place yeah i mean i definitely thought that it was you know these these ant-man movies in general they they're pretty low scope you know it's Mm -hmm. for most i would say that's like most of the solo mcu movies they're like fairly low scope um Mm kind of like adventure of the week single issue sort of thing but this movie certainly felt a little bit more along the vibes of like an event style comic book for marvel on par like i don't want to say it's like on par with like civil war or like secret invasion or anything like that per se Mm -hmm. but like it was still like a really big story and i think that it was because at the end of the day he was such a massive threat him escaping the quantum realm that was something that like i mean the entire time we were watching the movie i i i felt like well this kind of 
has to happen knowing what we know is coming but i was still like i was still frightened about it because i was like man i don't think any of our heroes right now can do much against this guy like they're gonna need somebody who is equally as brilliant as as he is which leads me into some of my theories about marvel coming up in the future that i'm i'm very excited about all right i will save time for that but I agree that this felt the biggest of all the Ant-Man movies. And what I really liked is that this is kind of like, for me, I took this as like, oh, this is like a precursor to what will happen later because he is going to be a bigger villain that we'll have to deal with. And this is kind of like, oh, no, this is what he looks like with complete complete control of a world um, and trying to prevent that from going on. Evan Mills, how did you feel about the post credit sequence with all those fucking Kangs? Spoiler uh I thought there was just going to be one. I didn't realize that they were all working together. There's hun- there were hundreds and hundreds. I literally I literally turned to Isaac and I said, "Well, I don't I don't know how I, I don't know how." Yeah. <laughs> I how? was so overwhelmed and I was like, "He was so powerful as one entity and now there are thousands of him. How in, uh, on earth are all of these Avengers going to defeat him?" I don't think it's going to be the Avengers that defeat him. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) He thinks it's the Fantastic Four. Ugh, don't do that to me. Okay, listen. For the comic books, though, this is for all the comic book listeners out there. Um, There's a few. I I will say that Kang is not the only person in the Marvel Universe that has a council of him. There is another character that has a council of themselves that are equally smart and equally very brilliant and uh, strong and kind of scary at the same time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Reed Richards. I was going to say. So sounds like, sounds like a stretch. Oh, God, cut that out. That's oh, good. that was so good, though, Damon. Good oh, job. I that, was re- no. that was good. Well, wow, I'm ready with my next Michelle Pfeiffer one whenever you want it. <laughs> Give me a second, please, because we have to. <laughs> there has to be time. To talk about Modoc, we have to. I we wanted to, to talk about Modoc. Okay. Oh, you mean George Lopez from Spy Kids 3D? Because no. that's what it felt like. No, Evan. And for the record, going, for, going forward in our friendship, I will never be talking about George Lopez and Spy Kids 3D. <laughs> it's never going to be that. <laughs> but go off, please. Modoc thoughts. Uh, well, shout out to Corey Stoll. I'm finally going to say his name right. Corey Stoll, uh, playing the character Darren Cross. And also, just want to say for the record, good job on me for scheduling these episodes the way I did. Oh, it was Shark uh, Boy. It was Love Shark Boy and Lava Girl. And I said that in theaters. <laughs> I, said, theater, I, said, I said, why does this look like Shark Boy and Lava Girl? Um, it's okay. It's Robert Rodriguez. It's the same. It, like, he wait, but Spike is 3D. Who was the bad guy in that? It doesn't matter. That one it was really um, doesn't. Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone. Stallone in kind of a similar thing. Thank you, producer Michael, for that fact check. Uh, yes, thank you so me- much. Because I knew, I, I literally told Isaac, I was like, Cassie and Murdoch interacting felt like Lava Girl and the villain. I see that. Mm-hmm. Her outfit is very Lava Girl. Uh, very Lava Girl, I would say. Yes. Um, um, can I go back to praising myself? Yes. <laughs> I did a very good job scheduling these podcast episodes. Because if you did rewatch Loki, Ant-Man 1, Ant-Man 2, you are fully prepared to watch Quantumania. And I feel good. That is good to me. Um, Darren Cross returns. He's now Modoc. I laugh my ass off every time he raised his little like skinny 100%. arms and legs. A hundred percent. He looked like a combination of George Lopez from Shark Boy and Lava Girl, Humpty Dumpty, and mm-hmm. and Lord Farquaad. Very Farquaad. Yes. To me, his his like CGI kind of felt like. You know, when you're on Google images and you're going through like pictures and you're going to try and save one and you're like, oh, I just found this one. I'm going to use it for a document. So you save it and then you go to that document and you go to open up the image and it takes up the entire screen and you didn't realize how large the file was. That mm-hmm. was what the CGI was like for Modoc. Like, it, why did it look so bad? It looked really stretched out and like yeah. fuzzy and it wasn't like very clear I don't know. It also didn't look like there was much depth there. Like, I would have liked to see his profile. Like, show me a nose. Like, it did yeah. look like they ran out of money and forgot that they had this character. 
I genuinely <laughs> probably every, the most expensive character in the whole movie. Every yeah. time he raised his shield, I was taken out of the movie. I literally was like, this is not a real movie. This is a movie from mm-hmm. 2003. And then it blew my mind that Isaac told me that that's the guy from X-Men. Yeah, the X-Men, the animated series. Modok was like a big character. And I remember that. him because yeah. he reminded me of Zerg. Or Z- Zerg Zol- from, from Zoltron. Zoltron? Story? No, Zoltron. What's his name from Power Rangers? Zorgon. Oh, Zordon. Zorgon. That's Zordon. 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 Wow, that took a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um I think he was funny though in the movie, like the like I'm not a dick. I don't want to be look, he, when he, especially when he said, "Look at me, I'm, I'm a dick." You're kind of like and I thought that was lip. so funny, but I just could not get over how bad he looked. The CGI of it all, like there were so many moments in this movie where like it just looked so muddy, where like there was like crashing. I was like, "What is happening?" I think that's why going forward, there's going to be some distance between movies to give the visual effects team time to like perfect and like make these movies look good again. Don't talk to me about she Hulk. I don't want to, I don't ever want to talk about she Hulk ever again. Look to that for (laughs) (laughs) more examples. Um, but, uh, Modoc, did you, did either of you watch the Modoc TV show on Hulu? With what? Patton Oswald? No, I really wanted to though. It, was it a looked TV show. Yeah, it was yeah. like in vain of like um, Robot Chicken. It was exactly, very like yeah. claymation, mixed media. I did not animated. know that. It's hilarious. Modoc works for AIM, which is like a super villain company, and he gets demoted. And he's trying to like basically every week he's like he's got a new plan to kill Iron Man, and it always fails. And he's got a wife and two kids. It's hilarious. Oh my god, the kids look like him too. Just wow. Little mm-hmm. like floating <laughs> but, soda cans. But the wife's face. just a human person. <laughs> what oh, if, really? That, yeah. That's fucked up. <laughs> and she has got two floating kid. Um we might do Modoc on this podcast. I'm just saying that right now. But um that was so fun. To see him in the movie was a joy. And yeah, I loved his conversation. I love that Cassie got to have a moment with her former attacker <laughs> from yeah, that um that's true. One. Yeah, yeah also, confronting it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was so funny. Every time one of them saw him for the first time, and they were like, "Darren, Darren, yeah," and like then, uh, like Evangeline Lilly, who's in the movie. Yeah, like yes. she had a moment. She was, she didn't get much time with him, but you know, there was that one scene. That's her ex lover, and yeah, and you know, it's so funny that like you know, in every Marvel film, one character gets like most of the comedic lines. It's funny that he got most of them. When he was like, and I get to die, an Avenger. Oh, my God. That was so funny. That was so silly. Very funny. <laughs> but it's funny because yeah. he, he has been an Avenger. Like, in the comic books, he has been with an iteration of the Avengers before. So it's like... Modoc? Yes, <laughs> unfortunately. Wow. I think he was, like, a part of the West Coast Avengers for, like, a hot second. Don't quote me on that, though. No, Somebody's going to come for me. Everyone's getting quoted today. Um, <laughs> I'll send you some release papers. This is not the original Modoc origin story. Like they just kind of took the Modoc name and kind of blended him with Darren Cross, right? Yes, correct. The original Modoc is very similar to like the um the television show that you were just talking about. He he mm-hmm. worked he was like a scientist with AIM. I I don't know. I think he was like experimenting with you know technology that was unknown, and and somehow he got little arms and and legs and, and a big head. Should- and if you're in the MCU, if you're strictly a movie watcher and you're like, I've never heard of AIM, you sir, you sure have, because that was Guy Pierce's company in Iron Man 3. Yeah, that was AIM. Um, there, there's so many different acronyms, aren't there? You know? AIM, Hammer, Shield, Hydra. Sword. Sword. <laughs> um, oh, it's like there's a theme. Or they were just <laughs> lazy. I'm just kidding. I don't think they were lazy. <laughs> I mean, Please. I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, they're all IRS. names of their IRS. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not talking shit, I swear. <laughs> okay, we got Modoc. Um, what else is there to say? What else can we slay about Quantum Mania? Um, well, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer. I swear, to was God. Um, she she was a bit in, she was in a bit of a love triangle at that dinner, and I'd say she was in quite a she was she was in a bit of a dangerous liaison. I hate you. <laughs> This is ridiculous. You know, can't we get 
Evan, can we just get through one fine day where we don't have these puns? See? Thank you. <laughs> wow. George Clooney. And wow. That's funny because that's George Clooney and Michelle Pfeiffer, a.k.a. Batman and Catwoman. And Catwoman. But he, was never, but he was not her Batman. He was not her Batman. Um, but what else can we talk about? We can talk about... The tiny people. Uh, William Jackson Harper. And then um, who was that, like, warrior woman? I don't know, but I thought Cassie had a crush on her. That Ooh. would have been cute. But uh, she... Did anybody Gen- else think Gentora? Gentora? Mm-hmm. She had such a lazy design. I don't know. That just felt like me. I like while I was sitting there <laughs> watching the movie, I was like, they forgot about her. No, a hundred percent. I literally was watching her and I was like, oh, they just took the girl who starred in that movie Prey and put her in this movie. Her design is just a character in general. I was like, okay, cool. Warrior woman. Like, we haven't seen that before. Like, I don't know. Give me something different. Like like I'm, I'm looking her up on Google Images. She's got like this like crown that looks like it's made of dirt or a spider. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, I don't know. She she was one of those characters where I, I felt like there was a lot of potential with that character to be like something actually pretty pretty cool. But then they forgot about her and they gave her the they gave her the most cliche line of the whole movie when they were like they were like talking about the quantum realm and she was, and then he's like, we have to get back home. And she said, at least you have a home to go back to. <laughs> That's true. And I said, okay, girl, give us your backstory. And then she didn't. No, I don't know. <laughs> like, I wonder if she's a character in the comics. Like if she is, she's like a super like out of it, left field character. It seems like there's some image. Like I'm looking her up. She looks pretty green, like literally green in her comic book iteration. Well, her and, the guy who could read minds and then the, the jello guy and the, the the guy with the fire head. They, mm-hmm. they seemed like the classic Thor side characters of like the rock guy and mm-hmm. Tessa Thompson and just like, let's put a ragtag team of semi comedic side characters mm-hmm. together for like a couple scenes. Yeah. yeah they were kind of a little, just kind of thrown in there but also like at the same time it makes i i I kind of liked that they were like oh we're all like refugees because all of our like distant planets were destroyed by kang like or all of Mm -hmm. our distant homes were destroyed by kang and kind of finding this like safe haven in the quantum realm i thought was kind of interesting and cool yeah i also liked the drinking of the juice like that was inventive because i was like i always think that in these movies especially in guardians when i'm like you're going to different galaxies english is not a language anywhere else but earth and so to me it's like i love when they think about things like that when they're like here drink this potion again a marvel tactic where we just go yes that's correct Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you drink this juice and now we can understand everyone. And it's like, okay, you've, you've answered my question. Yeah. And that was like such a bizarre moment when like Scott shows up and Cassie's like, got the juice dripping from her chin. She's like, dad, drink the juice. Was it the goo? Yeah. The goo. Yeah. Or the ooze. <laughs> drink the ooze. More Power Rangers. Power Rangers. Rangers. Simon ooze. Yeah. Another no, Michelle Pfeiffer. I think that I have Ivan, Ivan ooze. You said Simon ooze. Ivan ooze. Okay, guys, let, let's not fight over Ivan Ooze again. Okay, um, <laughs> see you next fall. That was my favorite line in Power Rangers movie. It was Kimberly. <laughs> I producer Michael put out a warrant for Evan Mills's arrest. The, <laughs> <laughs> it is criminal. What he's saying. Um, okay, let's get to the end. Um, okay, so you know, there's a whole beautiful psychedelic scene where Scott go small and there's like the probability thing or whatever. (gasps) I love that scene. It's very good. But they get the little golden ball, the MacGuffin that they need. Um, Kang's like ready to go. Um, But then what happens? They just fight him. They just fight him. They like rally the troops and the moving buildings and they fight back against Kang. Everybody gets to go home. Oh, that's what Michael fucking Douglas brings in an army of ants. ants. Yeah. Because he is Ant-Man. Also, that was so funny when the ants were falling into the quantum realm and they Mm -hmm. just showed that one ant close up and he was like, and I was like, that's, it was, it was hilarious. It was goofy to show them. He was like, and every second for them was a year or whatever Mm -hmm. it it was. They've been there for thousands of years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, The, that scene, the probability chamber 
Mm-hmm. I thought that that was so cool because, you know, it, there ended up being like a, a mass amount of Scots and then there mm-hmm. was a mass amount of hopes. Yes, but there then was. when they all came together, it was just the two of them, which I thought was really cool because I was like, wow, there was only one choice for them to make in that moment and it involved each other. And that's why there was no others. Damn. I didn't think wow. about that. Wow. I yeah. didn't either. I literally in my I head, I said, that. I said, well, where did they all just go? No, it's because said, they had also, one choice to make, and it was because it was with one. each other. Yeah, you know, and that's why I, that's why I do a podcast because you know I miss some things. Uh, I love that, and it makes me like their relationship more. And again, Hope Van Dyne, she's for sure in this movie. There's you know the big fight with Kang, which I'm like, why are I don't know power level wise, Ant Man and the Wasp are can just duke it out with Kang. Uh, See that that's where I was like I was like mm mm. They're not, mm-hmm. they're not strong. They're not strong enough. That action scene was kind of badass, though. The one on the bridge where, like, you know, he turned into giant man. And he, like, smashed him up against that that wall. I did like, like that. Like, that yeah. was cool. That was, like, straight out of the comic books. Like, mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed that fight mm-hmm. scene. Also, Marvel loves a third act bridge fight. It's true. Yeah. Bridging the That's gap true. to the end of the movie. Bridging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should. It's like we should write for Marvel or something. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Are they listening? I did like that. I honestly thought it would have been okay if everyone made it home and Scott was just trapped in the quantum realm until the next Avengers movie again. Yes. I guess they already did that. But even more if like the wasp, you know, she comes back. Uh, so he gets trapped there. Jan or Hope comes back. She's like, I gotta get my man. And then she, I guess, kicks Kang's ass. Is that well, what I'm led to believe? They're little blasters. Yeah, and I'm honestly shocked with Marvel's track record that they didn't kill Hope. Because I, they yeah. seem to love to kill the female lead, like, love interests. I really yeah. thought one of those Ant family members wasn't going to make it out of this movie alive. Yeah, I thought Michelle Pfeiffer Same. was definitely going to die. I thought Michelle yeah, Pfeiffer like or gonna Hope it. were going to die. I mean, I thought at least they would have been, like, done that thing where, like, Everyone thinks someone's dead, and then we, the audience, know that they live like in a post credit sequence. Yes, but, yes, dare yes. I say that's why you have a post credit sequence. Well, and it was also um, interesting. I told him this that at the end of an Ant Man movie, it said Kang will return, not Ant Man. Mm-hmm. It didn't say like Ant Man and Kang will return. It just said Kang, and I was like, "Wow, that's bold of them to be like a movie that does not have Kang's name in it." They're like, "He, but he will be the one that returns." Yeah. Oof. And also, they do. They did Judy Greer so dirty. They Judy who? Lot. Judy Greer. I don't know. She wasn't in the movie. Never heard of her. Exactly. <gasps> they didn't even let her be in Endgame. Like okay. you know, you know, at the end when they were all at Iron Man's funeral, why the hell was Judy Greer and not there? Cassie was there. She was standing with Hope. Yeah, but mm-hmm. Judy Greer is a stepmom of the year. Stepmom of the year. Just saying. No Greer. Um, Could have had Greer in that montage at the beginning with Jimmy Wu and Jimmy Wu. Yeah. Like, why was she not just in, even in that montage? Yeah, they didn't really acknowledge her like at all. They just talk about her mother. Also, yeah. why did Ka- this is so random, but to bring it back kind of to like the familial ties, Cassie kept on calling Hank Grandpa Hank. Thank you. And I was yeah. like, he's not your grandpa. They're not like, even married. Yeah. I can't. They're not married. Confused by that. That was confusing. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you don't even know this man. <laughs> you don't even know this weird ass man. Hey, Cassie, <laughs> let's let's work on this this like quantum thing. Honestly, I like so ants. Good. I'm your grandpa, Cassie. That's so good. I just there is not a world where I would meet an old man and he informed me that he loves ants. That I'd be like, let's hang out. There, no amount of science could make me hang out with <laughs> Michael Douglas. <laughs> but you know what? But I take like out to the hang- ants part, and you're go- you're golden. Why? <laughs> I mean, I would hang out with Michael Douglas even if he did have ants in his pants. That's totally cool with me. <laughs> Thank you for saying ants in the pants. Uh, I love, I love the phrase ants in the pants. But you know the other phrase I also love: "Fuck, Mary, kill." Um, it is time for everyone's favorite segment of this week and every week: uh, the "Fuck, Mary, kill." Longtime listeners of this podcast, Isaac, know that we have been through all the Ant Man movies and. You know what? It's down to the wire. So all that's left in the Ant-Man franchise to fuck, marry, and kill. We got Kang the Conqueror. Modoc, aka Darren Chris. Darren Cross. Sorry. Not Darren Chris. Darren Chris. Chris. 
fucking wish. Uh, Kang, Modok, and finally, for our fuck, Mary kill, I don't know why we didn't do this sooner, an ant, a giant human-sized ant. Hmm. Fuck, Mary kill. Dare I say this is possibly one of the most challenging ones. I will go first to give my guests time to think. For me, we have to take it back to Lombard, Illinois, where I grew up. Um, every summer, you know, we lived, we had a very massive backyard, and every summer the ants would infiltrate the house. It was an ant infestation. We always had to make sure we were cleaning up after ourselves, couldn't leave sugar out. Yes. Was I one of those kids who would just dip my finger in a bag of sugar to eat it? Yes, because <laughs> I was a child. And I was like, give me that sugar rush immediately. So I hate ants, and I have a really bad history with ants, so I'm going to kill that giant ant. I think that would be disgusting to do anything else. The My fuck will be... I swear to God, if you say Modoc, <laughs> It will be Modoc. <laughs> yeah, there you go, baby. You say what you want to say. I'm going to fuck Modoc. I don't know how. I don't know where, but we're going to figure it out. For just one night, Una Nocha, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that with Modoc. Um, and my Mary is going to be Kang the Conqueror. And if you ask me why, I will slap you in the face. You see what I see. You see this gorgeous man. And there's multiple ones. Got to say, my favorite Kang is the one that talks like this. Um, <laughs> just like, yes. it's like he put charcoal all over his face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's got that giant hat. Uh, he looks terrifying to some. But also, I love the one in the Pharaoh hat that looked pretty cool. Also, there was like a Kang who was just in a suit. Uh, he looked really cute. It was like an orange suit. I need to watch it again. I need to like pick out which Kang I want. Um, you can have a Kang for every day of your life. And that's my plan. Um, wow. Those are my picks. Let's go Evan Mills. Uh, would you like to give us your uh, picks? I'm sorry Michelle Pfeiffer is not available. That's pretty upsetting, but it, it's it's fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's no winning in this one. Like, I would say... We don't have to win. We just all have to lose. I'd say, <gasps> fuck Kang, marry the ant, kill Modok. Because that ant is smart as hell and could build me a beautiful house and build me, like, tunnels and, like... So this is what you want? You're going to kill Mo- <laughs> and you're gonna kill Modok. You, oh, you told Damon to speak his truth, I speak my truth, and you judge? Well... I don't sleep with Dana. Like, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, back. I would. Yeah, that's fuck Kang, Mary, the ant, kill Modoc solely based on that CGI. Uh huh. Wow. So the CGI on the ant was better. A hundred percent. Wow. Okay. They put they you could see the hairs on that ant. You couldn't Ooh. even see the pores on that stretched out Humpty Dumpty. Yeah. I was so offended by that. I was like, Marvel. Really, the pores. I was like, Marvel, this is your, (laughs) what, 30th film, and that is what you gave us? Anyways, I could talk about (laughs) MODOK for days of how upset that made me. But anyways. All right. Isaac Snyder. Yeah. So um, all of you are not paying attention to the immediate threat on our reality which is <laughs> kang um so wow I, and and i it, it hurts me to say i'm this. talking about the immediate reality for my body and i <laughs> i understand that but for the betterment of society as a whole i'm gonna have to kill kang wow. um i'm sorry i don't want this man to come and conquer my planet I, he could conquer something else of mine, but That's I don't think he would stop there. Um, <laughs> All right. So, you know, I, I'm going to kill Kang. I am going to marry the ant as well, because, yeah, Evan brought up a really great point, which is... You said that's what you want, and then you said the exact same thing. (laughs) No, 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 I know, but I was thinking about it, too, where I was like, actually, you are right. He did build, like, those ants built an entire, like, civilization um, within, like, what, 40 minutes of screen time? So, like, that was kind of hot. And, um, yeah, you know, when it comes to mowage, that is a big thing for me, you know, being able to build a foundation. (laughs) He said mowage. <laughs> mowage. Um, mowage, mowage, mowage. And then, oh. you know, that leaves me to fuck Modoc, I guess. What's which, wrong with both of you? Which I, I wouldn't, <laughs> here's the thing. I wouldn't necessarily be excited about fucking Modoc. Yeah, it, no one's more, excited about it. No, no one's like necessarily excited about it. But like, 
it, it would certainly be a story. <laughs> and yeah, I, mean, I only have to do it like once, you know. Yeah, just once. Just once. Um, so you know, I don't know, I don't know what would stick where, what would go into what. But I feel like yeah. he would he would tell. He wouldn't he would he would know. Uh, do you that, think he's a top? Well, that scene when they pulled him out of the little thing and you saw his little butt cheeks. <gasps> That's true. He did have his little butt cheeks. That made me laugh so cheeks. hard. <laughs> he did have his little butt you cheeks. Know? Everyone in the theater laughed about that. <laughs> I mean that family of 25 as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what, Evan? Everyone loves Modoc. That's just how it is. Um, but you know what? I think it's healthy when we have differing opinions and fuck Mary Kill. Let's not cross those streams. Bill Murray. Um, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's Quantum Media. Do we dare speak on the Loki post credit sequence? Yes. Oh, yeah. Great. I, I love to see him. Uh, and it felt. Here's what I'll say. Much like how Multiverse of Madness left me thinking, have they seen WandaVision? I think it was very clear that the people who made this movie had seen Loki the series. Absolutely. They did their homework for this mm-hmm. one. And yeah. I loved that that post credit scene at the end, it kind of just felt like it was like a scene from the new season of Loki. It, yeah. it wasn't necessarily like a, like a teaser or anything like that. It just kind of felt like it was like a scene that we're going to see in the, in the movie or in the show when it comes out um, later this year. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was really, really cool. And I love Loki. I do. I love Loki. I thought that Loki was one of the stronger um, MCU TV shows that came out. I, on a second watch of Loki, now like Loki. I didn't, but then when I re- rewatched it for this podcast, which forced me to watch it with a more critical eye, I'm about it. I'm I'm pro. Yeah. Show me more. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I mean, if Jonathan Majors is going to be showing up in season two, like as a regular character, I'm... Well, we're probably going to see different versions of him, which is going to be fun for Jonathan Majors as an actor. He's going to win an oh, Emmy. Yeah. Like, he's going to be one of those Marvel actors that wins an emmy well uh, now that angela I'm bassett calling. has opened that door i think i think emmy grammy or emmy golden globe oscar grammy. Are gonna be like yeah the grammys <laughs> a grammy. i mean we'll i mean we'll see we'll see on march in march whenever the oscars march are 12th. um march 12th rooting for angela rooting for what kind of forever if you want to know my thoughts listen to that podcast episode um okay let's do this evan mills uh where can people find you on the internet Oh, you know, you can just uh, Google my name, Evan Mills, or all all of my social media handles are Ockfan Mills, A-W-K-V-A-N-M-I-L-L-S. I keep it simple. That way, if you type that in, you'll find you'll find everything. You will. You will. Isaac Snyder, how about you? And yeah, I wish I kept it simple. Um, My Instagram is Isaac. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. My Instagram is Ike. I K E D Snyder. My Twitter is Isaac D Snyder. My TikTok is I D Sny. And then my Gmail is Isaac D S 1993 at gmail.com. And if you guys want to email me, you can. That's okay. But that's not his email address. <laughs> that is my email address. <laughs> it isn't, no. <laughs> okay. You're talking about my old email address. This is my new email address. <laughs> The one that my agents use. Okay. And you can Absolutely. find me at on my fan page, Michelle Pfeiffer. I, one, I run Michelle Pfeiffer's on Instagram. <laughs> it's a MySpace yeah. page. It's a MySpace page. Incredible. If you want to follow this podcast, you can follow us on Instagram at podcast616p3. That P3 stands for Press Play Podcasts, our podcasting network that allows us to do the show. <laughs> You fools. Um, you can follow me, uh, Damon, at Dayman Royster on Instagram, D A Y, please. Um, producer Michael, if you want to hop on the mic real quick, what letter grade would you give this podcast episode? I think for the last Ant Man that we did, I gave you guys a small A mm-hmm. because uh, Ant Man goes small sometimes, but this time he went big. So I'm going to give you guys a big A. Oh, hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Yes! Ugh, we go big. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Hairspray, yay! <laughs> <laughs> My God, I'll see myself out. Please see that you do. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Ant Man and the Wasp. Evangeline Lilly. Never forget that you are in this movie. Um, and that's <laughs> all or else she'll have. get lost. Stop. <laughs> okay. Let him finish his speech. (laughs) We have to go. Please remember that with great power comes great responsibility. 